Welcome to the Lord Rexworth podcast, where we embark on a transformative journey to set your mind and spirit on the right path. I'm Lord Rexworth. Join me from Castle Rexworth as we engage in insightful conversations with a diverse range of guests, including VTubers, content creators, and thought leaders. Delve into the realms of creativity, inspiration, and self-discovery as we explore the stories and perspectives that shape the digital landscape. In our society, the notion of perfectionism is often heralded as a virtue, a quality to be admired and sought after. However, I dare say to you today that this pursuit can often lead us down a path of frustration, anxiety, even paralysis. You see, my dear friends, perfectionism is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it can drive us to achieve excellence, to push ourselves beyond our limits in pursuit of our goals. But on the other hand, it can imprison us in a relentless cycle of self-criticism and unattainable standards. So how do we overcome this formidable foe? How do we liberate ourselves from the shackles of perfectionism? That's something I want to talk about with my guest today. Dawn Steeler is a VTuber, a V-singer, an artist, and a colleague of mine with Project Astadia. Dawn, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. First, let's find out more about you and your journey as a VTuber and content creator. How did you first get started as a VTuber? Uh, I started in, I started as a VTuber around, like, I believe it was June, end of June. Um, the main reason I want to get into VTubing was that I've always been told that with friends in high school, I always used to narrate everything that was going on, which sometimes they found kind of annoying. Um, but they they literally had said before, like, why don't you just become a streamer if you just narrate any anything and everything? So I was at that point, I was thinking, like, why shouldn't I? But also with perspective of perfe perfectionism, uh, I didn't want to have my appearance shown because I was still very insecure about it. Mm. To, and then then came the. Then came me finding out about VTubing. So I started watching it more, I started thinking about it more. And then around June last summer, I was like, hey, why, why don't I just try? So I started with a chibi model that was free. And I just started recording because I finally got myself a good PC that could allow me to record games. So that's how I started into VTubing. That's, a, that's fantastic. Now, uh, everyone has, I guess, like their first VTuber, the first couple of VTubers that, um, that they first uh, discovered. What, uh, what was it for you? Which, which ones? Oh, uh, that would be rough because I am quite bad at remembering some stuff. But I think Sorry. it would probably be, it would definitely be one of more of the bigger corporations like Niji Sanji or something. Hmm. Um, or it might have been more like someone like Rikami for music and stuff. But oh. I think I, I, I'm not going to search up like all of the whole life and uh, stuff. But I think it was more of the whole life characters that actually uh, started watching. Do you have any particular favorites? Any Kamiyoshis? Um... Due to me not actually having the constraints to usually watching streams and doing other things, I would say from whole life, the ones I did really want to watch was... Uh, what was their name? Um, it was one, the one with the like, samurai that was Jap more Japanese. Um, I don't know if I can quickly find them. Because no, I, right. I did draw them before. Um, oh, yeah, here it is. Nakiri Ayame. Nakiri Ayame. Interesting. Okay. Now, as far as your your own VTuber model, image, persona, everything like that, um, can you perhaps give us some of your lore, what type of VTuber you are? Yes, I can. Uh, since I have my 2.0 coming out, it's still a bit... Um, bit like in the works because i've never truly written out my lore fully but it is basically like a link like every model i'll get is basically a link between each other so from what i 
have, from what I have written, it, is that my 1.0 is a harpy, of course, since you can see. Mm. Uh, a lot of people compare it to an angel, actually, which is funny. <laughs> um, and if anyone says, I am not a chicken, but I've accepted people calling me a chicken at this point. <laughs> uh, but it basically starts with that my 1.0 would be this this model that is um, a harpy that has awoken after a 5,000 year old sleep that has forgotten about his entire past and who he is. So he starts roaming the land trying to figure out what happened before he fell into the slumber. Um, he always has a journal, which I actually don't have a toggle for, but my 2.0 will have, finally. Mm. Uh, and everything he basically finds, like every person he meets, every uh, everything he finds is written down in this journal. So right now the 1.0, the harpy, um, the like angelic harpy kind of style would be the current arc. Because it's like, as in a story, it's chapters. And with my journal, it's arcs. So every person's story can be... Uh, combined into my journal as a different arc like for example the project Astaria could be an arc in it in itself yeah. this this makes it very open for any friends or any person to actually add into my lore um, and then the my next my 2.0 form which I can give kind of hints for which is a mafia boss form will be like a past arc before this harpy Wherein I used to climb up, wherein it used to climb up from the ranks as a mafia boss. So it started out as like a recruit that slowly built up, and due to the ways how he handled stuff, he started getting more and more corrupted by some dark demonic energy that slowly started turning him more into a harpy. Where when I show my 2.0, you'll see like the my head wings actually look corrupted in the sketch. Um, and whatever happened between that that area and this area, so from like the demon boss to just the angelic harpy, that is what my 2.0 lore is going to be able to tell. Like, what happened in between that. Yes, that's fascinating. That's uh, it's a, like the godfather with a twist or something. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, how... How has your your journey as a VTuber been thus far? And um, I, as part of your journey, how can you recap how you came to be a part of Project Astadia? Yes, I can try to uh, try to think of it because my journey has basically been, I would say, pretty good mm. for for just half a year. I do feel like it's been going pretty good for how I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there are still some feelings of setbacks because there are just some streams are less than others, of course, but mm. that's where you got to try to keep going and continue onwards. Yeah. Because um, I remember I've had a, ba a past bad experience with a group, uh, with a similar VTuber group, um, which let me just say this is and that that one was like a thousand times wor a thousand times worse there's no comparison between project Astaria and that group it's, that was just a bad group it you can't even search it up anymore because everything from them has been deleted so no socials no site no discord there was just some basically just some people doing weird creepy things and the management wasn't do it wasn't good enough at actually handling it which gave them a lot of setbacks oh goodness um after that we went into made like a friend group which also went bad because of just specific people that i will not bring up due to not wanting to cause any drama of course of course um which that did make me go down a like uh, well not dark path but it did make like a really bad time uh, but after that with another friends and just trying to get back up I started just going past it and it was starting to go good again but I still wanted to someday get into a group or an agency or that kind of thing 
and I remember a lot of people from my VTuber family. There um, are a lot, some people on VTuber family actually collabed with projects that started before. Oh. And some of them are also in it, of course. Hmm. <laughs> and and then I saw later, like a month later or something, or a bit longer or early, I don't remember exactly. That is when I saw that they had opened the applications. So I immediately tried to put in my application because I knew some of the people. I knew I interacted with some of the other people before on Twitter. For example, Nobu, my, one of our fellow groupmates, is yeah. one I followed on Twitter and interacted with quite a bit, but I never really got to actually talk a lot with, with him. Mm. And due to getting into Project Staria, I managed to be able to get get a hold of uh, with him more. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yes. Um... So I guess the next question is, um, and we sort of touched on this before we started recording, but um, if you wouldn't mind, what sort of projects are you working on right now? Anything you feel comfortable sharing with the audience? Yeah, I've got a lot of long-term projects, but also some short-term projects, because, um, of course, some of my hobbies are singing, drawing, voice acting, and random things, because like maybe someday I'll get into rigging, maybe someday I'll get into writing. I have got no clue. But uh, for singing, for example, I want to uh, make more covers. That's why I'm having one in the works right now. Um, I'm wanting to get better at singing. And with my art, I've actually been trying to draw my own model, but I might redo it because of... Um, now being able to draw the body different, but I have a project of making my own um, model, which is, I don't think I'll call it 3.0 or something, but it will be just be like a side model or something similar. Hmm. And um, of course, there are some voice acting things. I don't have any project really of voice acting, but in the future, I would like to do more with it, which also fits in with singing, of course. Yeah. So. Those are some of the things right now. Well, I think you've found the perfect cross-section to be able to uh, avail yourself of access to those opportunities, starting with uh, with VTubing. And I think you'll find, as it has with me, that those opportunities will come for voice acting, for music, for any type of project. I mean, the sky's really the limit. Um, and so I, th I, I do believe you're going to be seeing a lot more of these opportunities and in the very near future, probably going to happen sooner than you think. Um, that is definitely my belief and prayer for you. Now, as far as your ultimate goals as a VTuber, as a singer, as an artist or a content creator, what do those look like for you? And where, I mean, where do you see all of this going in another year or, or even five years? I know that feels like an eternity for, for us in this space, but... What, what does all that look like for you? Yeah, like you said, in this space, anything can happen in even a month. Like right. you, you can you can you can start just applying to the age and just suddenly become a lot bigger, or just or if something bad happens and something goes wrong. There are so many things that can happen in a year, but and five years is so much far. Like a lot of people. A lot of people, even at my age, just in five years, they'll have their family set, they'll have a uh, solid workspace, that kind of stuff. But as in where I see myself with mainly VTubing and stuff, it's, um, of course, I want to get better at singing, so I want to make more covers, that's one thing. I also eventually want to try to make an original song, that is just a goal of mine, because because I really want to make something that's like personal to myself and that could radiate with a lot of people. Um, like I said, with my art, I've got something stuck in my throat. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, getting my own model made, because I want to try to see if I can get my art as good that I can make my own model and maybe even make for others. And depending on if I actually want to get into it, like trying to rig it myself even, uh, another thing that is maybe more far-fetched far is um, more voice acting. 
I don't know how far I want to get with it, but I might actually want to see if I can maybe get into that space more. Because mm. I really love trying to make my voice deeper, trying to change my accent, trying to make it higher. Or, which I don't know how I've done it, but do a valley go accent and actually having people say that it's way too accurate. Um, we, we've got to hear this now. We, we've got to hear this. <laughs> can you give us a sample? So if I start so if I start talking more like this, that's how I would do my Valigo accent a bit, <laughs> and it's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is clever! And um, I'm told you've uh, that this this hits a little closer to home for me. It hits different just because you know I'm a Brit, uh, but you got you got a pretty good Scottish accent going. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> can we can we hear a little little sample of that too while we're at it? It all depends. <clears throat> it all depends on what you want to hear from the Scottish accent. I can can talk about like any kind of subject if I want to with this voice, but it really sometimes gets rough trying to get into the accent a bit. And one example I have that is quite fun with the accent is. When I play Mario Kart and I get really angry, you can hear the Scottish voice coming more and more to the point where it gets stuck. Mm. I I just heard the echoes of my ancestors there. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm mostly English, but I do have a I do have a lot of uh, a lot of Scottish blood coursing through my veins. So it's just like I'm like, mm. oh that that was just like smiling in Highlands over there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, because I'm not even close to the nationality, which is why I find it so weird that I can do the accent so well. Right, right. And, I mean, those for those who are just curious, if you don't mind shedding, um, nationality, what, what is it? Oh, yeah, I'm Dutch, so I come from the Netherlands. Oh, okay. A, a Dutch mm -hmm. VTuber doing a, doing a really good Scottish accent. I'm I'm surprised. That's that's really quite good. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll also leave it up to um leave it up to our to our scottish viewers as well to uh, to gauge their thoughts um you lot try not to be too grumpy about it though i know it's hard and but, not only that but also like the apparently arnold's voice that people really love hearing i it's so weird i yeah i i can i can hear the the faint rumblings of a uh, bit of a deutschland <laughs> accent there <laughs> You, uh, you want to give us your best get to the chopper? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll we'll settle for the Terminator grunts. Yeah, that, that's good. <laughs> we'll go for that. No, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, no, I, I love all this. This is this is really good, and it's it's fantastic how far you've come in such a short amount of time um i know it's partly because it, you know a lot of this can be personality driven but um also the fact that you are just driven period um you you've got a lot of energy i think we all noticed that when when we brought you online with the with project astadia is that you bring such an energy to everything that you do and we absolutely love that there's just you brought a lot of life and vitality to things, and um, Celeste and myself and Chenga and Nobu and, and Val, we were all just over the moon to to see you come in and just yeah, <laughs> just just do your thing. We we love it. Um, I do want to shift though our conversation to something that is very human, and dare I mm -hmm. say even more intimate. And that is the topic of uh, what I mentioned in, in the monologue. You and I, I think, are a lot alike in the sense that we both struggle with perfectionism. And as you heard in that opening monologue, it is safe to say we're both very driven people. We strive for excellence in all that we do, but sometimes that can be as much or even more a curse rather than a blessing. It gets to the point where we allow others to be more human than ourselves, or perhaps we even push ourselves and others too hard and too far. And then there's many different ways perfectionism can impact individual lives, and it is no exaggeration to say that 
this is a lifetime struggle that we look at. My first question to you on this, can you share with us a bit about your personal journey with perfectionism? Seems like an odd question, but I guess the better question would be, when, when did you first notice its impact on your life? Um, I think when I have, for me, it's um, the fact that I have a bad, bad memory when it comes to like past things. But from what I can remember, it was mostly starting from high school already, where I started mainly noticing that whenever I was around people, I was comparing myself to others. And nowadays, it's more in the positive side. But I think. In high school, it was more on the negative side, as in, oh, they're popular. I, I don't have my, I don't have the best grades. They do have good grades. They're funny. I wasn't funny, so I tried to adapt myself to be more likable to people, even though sometimes it meant doing stuff that wasn't even like really me, where I tried to be the perfect sign for people, even though. Maybe that wasn't what who I wanted to be, and it started mainly happening with high school when I got more into like art and just school things in general. Where if I looked at something that I drew, or but if I made something that I was like, this is not good enough. I need to make it better. I need to make it more likable. I need to make it perfect. Mm. When probably more often than not, you had something that was good enough. Good enough in the eyes of a lot of people. But there's always that nagging voice deep down inside you. It's just like, it could be better. And thinking of all the different ways that you can try and make it better. Yeah, it's it, it was really annoying when, because it's, if you have it early, and it keeps nagging on you, but you don't really show it off to people. It just starts, st it starts staying for longer, which also means in the future, like right now, I'll have, I have more trouble with it because it's been so ingrained into myself that it's really hard for me to accept stuff. Yeah. Even something as simple as a compliment. Mm hmm. As soon as people start complimenting me, um, I instantly start either deflecting it, so I start making it into more of a compliment towards themselves. Like if they say, "Oh, your uh, your voice is so good," I probably say something like, um, "Yeah, it might be good, but I'd like your voice better." That kind of situation, or I'll just completely deny it, saying like, "No, it's not good enough. It can be way better." Mm. We learn to uh, we learn to develop a strong sense of humility, and in some ways, perhaps even the occasional false humility, uh, where it's not needed. Yeah, it. Um, I've noticed the same thing. I think a lot of my own perfectionist tendencies stemmed from bullying in childhood. I figured if I just got good enough, people wouldn't. I would be unassailable. People would stop saying things about me, pointing out faults, and and just doing the things that bullies do. Certain family members that I grew up with, you know, if I just got good enough, they wouldn't have any criticisms whatsoever. They wouldn't have anything other to say. They might finally start heaping praise. But we know that's not how it works. Yeah, it's, that's a... It's a... It's an interesting mindset to have because what is good enough? That's the thing. When is it good enough? For who is it good enough? Exactly. Like you can have the best art there. You can have the best art there is, or you can have the best voice or the best personality, but there will always be someone or something that isn't good enough for someone. But that doesn't mean that it's not good at all. Yeah. It's um. Yeah, and that's that can be the struggle, is getting to a place of acceptance where it's good enough for you, and you just let it rest at that. Um, we, we have talked about some of the common signs, behaviors, 
we observe in ourselves. But how has perfectionism influenced relationships with you, work, other areas of your life? Oh, uh, like I said, and it was before, it's the main part is that you start criticizing things that sound fine fine to others. Mm. For example, if I have with art or voice or singing, um, it, if you show it to others, they might say like, oh, it's good or it's handsome or like appearance or it's handsome or you're doing so good or it looks so well. You immediately in yourself start not believing and be like, yeah, but this is not good enough. This is not good enough. Or you compare it to others. And in work for like a work behavior it's that i've made myself not uh not want to accept failures if i fail at something it means to myself oh i wasn't good enough and i'll sit with it for a long time so it has made it so i can't fail if i fail i'm not good that's how i've said it in work and with relationship sides it will make it so i feel like i have to always be perfect or else i will lose people or have them ignore me or not want to talk to me anymore which can be really devastating if i don't hear back from them for a few days because i immediately will start thinking like oh they i'm not good enough for them anymore yeah. start to play out the worst case scenario in your head and um easy you start spiral from there you start to overthink about stuff that is not actually true. Yeah. And I think that's probably one of the one of the biggest steps in overcoming that type of perfectionism is to recognize what is true and what is necessarily what's not necessarily true. Um but I I guess what a lot of people would be interested to know from your personal perspective, Don. How do you stop yourself when, how do you keep yourself from spiraling like that? Um, the, what I've found out, which usually helps at least lessen it a bit is mainly just surround yourself with the people that will say the opposite. Whenever you start thinking that I might not be like appearance wise or not, but might not be handsome enough, or my art might not be good enough, or my voice isn't good enough, or I'm not likable enough. That you go to the people that actually care for you and send them a message if it's not IRL to be like, hey, I'm feeling like I'm not good enough, or I'm feeling this isn't good enough. Um, what do you think? And then just try to immerse yourself with them and. Even if you can't accept it, try to at least keep it somewhere, like write it down or listen to it or just stay, keep it in mind that they are truly meaning it, meaning it. And it's not just saying it because you're feeling bad. I love that. It reminds me of those sayings that I keep filed in the back of my mind that uh, there's one... That is, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And there was another one, that if your circle doesn't inspire you, you don't have a circle, you've got yourself a cage. Um, so yeah, it's, or, I mean, it's like what our parents and our grandparents would say, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Um, I love that. It's so simple and yet timeless wisdom, to be sure, that it's... If you want to be a happier person, first start by hanging around some happier people and people who make you happy. Um, you know, the people that have sort of been through what you've been through and perhaps have, um, have overcome or have gone a bit farther in their journey and you can stand to, to learn from them. Um, and as far as any like breakthrough moments or milestones in this journey. Uh, do you have any that you could, that you could share with us, you know, finding those, those friend groups or just those incremental improvements uh, over time to kind of stop yourself from being an unhealthy level of perfectionist? Um, well, I'd say one of the ones that I, 
that have happened that has happened, which is a big one, is probably um, or well, two. I'd say one is of course Project Astaria uh, getting into the group because of all of the lovely people being there and always, always at least someone having to be there to talk to or to fans. But I'd probably say um, that so getting that cover is also a big one. Since, of course, I've always been quite insecure about my own voice and not liking it, even if I hear it back. But now I've got a cover in the works, which I can't just let, I can't just not post because that will be a waste. So I'll have to post a cover where I actually have to use my voice and actually sang something. And then it can be criticized as much as people want to because it will be public. But just the fact that I've recorded something, got it, got it mixed, got it fully done, and then just post it, that will, that's a big step in just saying, I don't care what people think, I'll just do it. Yeah, because you'll have done more than what most people have done. Most people just talk about doing those things. They don't actually do it. You're doing it. That's something to be proud of in and of itself. So, um, what are some of the things that you try to do, whether it's periodically, daily, however often you do it, um, how do you cultivate that sort of self-compassion, that acceptance, or even forgiveness, self-forgiveness in the face of imperfection? Uh, that one's probably one of the more harder ones, because that is one of the issues that I still have um, quite, a, quite a bit but I would say that having people to vent to and try to reassure me is basically something that has helped me a lot I have uh, one best friend that I talk to basically daily and as much as they can talk as well um, this weekend they're a bit more busy so they can't really talk as much but I usually just play games with them a lot or just talk with them or chat about my things that has happened or even just send send dog pictures at this point <laughs> um, and oh, just, wow. the f just the fact of not having a moment where I am alone alone with my thoughts helps a lot in the moments where I struggle with things I tend to see that if I have people around that actually are able to talk or listen, that it can help a lot, even though I myself have a lot of issues trying to actually be open about my own stuff. Because um, I don't like... It always feels like I'm bothering someone if I do, but it does help a lot whenever I do it. Yeah, sometimes it just... It really helps to have understanding friends that you can just just talk about it so, um, I suppose if would that be would that be the the sort of advice that you would give to to others who are struggling with all of this to seeking to kind of break free from the grill grip of just these unhealthy habits with perfectionism is first go find friends would that be any any other bits of advice that uh, they give to anyone yeah i think i mean i would say saying just saying friends would be maybe a bit too much because of course you have some people that don't call others their friends but just surround yourself with people that will actually just listen to you and care for you is one of the things that when you feel bad, you actually have someone to talk to and try to reassure you that it's not however you're thinking. Because with imperf imperfectionism, it's in your brain. That's the thing. Uh, what, you f what you think is not the same as what others see from you. And my main advice as well with that is try to do stuff and look, better, look back later on what to improve. But don't think about it as in what is bad. Because if you start looking back at something like sing, like your voice, if you say, oh, that is bad or this is not good, then it won't be good because 
you have wired in your brain to call it not good. But if you think about it as in like, oh, hey, this is something I can improve, you will basically tell yourself, hey, it's good, but it can be improved to be even better. Yeah. Perhaps even helpful to look at it almost like, um, I don't know if you know the, the Kaizen model of continuous improvement. It's kind of a Japanese concept. Um, I don't actually. But um, I don't know, maybe, maybe that helps. I know sometimes it helps me just sort of stop myself and say, look, you're not going to hit every mark 100% every time, especially on your first go around on something. But you can certainly make continuous improvements over time. It's not going to be a linear track. There will be peaks and troughs. But as long as there's... I mean, as long as you can at least see, looking back, an, an overall upward trend, I mean, that's that's got to mean something. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's uh, the idea of Kaizen, continuous improvement, taking... What already exists in just doing a little tinkering here, a little tinkering there, just tiny adjustments over over a long period of time that end up having um, end up having a long term positive impact. Um, it's yeah, a, a interesting concept I learned about when I was in business school, and uh, that's um, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that because one of the points I indeed have as well is that you yourself are the, are the only person that can get better with your own perfectionism. But it doesn't mean that you're alone, of course, because if you need help with something, you can ask people and it won't be a bother because per perfect doesn't exist. Perfect is just a construct to mo motivate you into becoming better and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because after all, if something was perfect, why would you even work on it on why, or why would you um, continue with it? Because it's already perfect, so what is there to become better at? Then, and it would, if everything will be perfect, you will have a sense of emptiness because you can't do anything else with it. Yeah. It's like that line about Alexander the Great, where he looked upon his empire... And he wept because there were no more worlds to conquer. Um, yeah. So, well, Don, this is this has been an interesting conversation, and um, I, even I'm walking away with this with some good food for thought. You've uh, you've given me much to think about. Um, thank you, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Of course, it's my pleasure. And all of the links to Dawn's socials, comms, streaming platforms, we'll make sure to embed those in the, uh, in the show notes of our podcast. Overcoming perfectionism can be a challenging journey, often, as we said, a lifetime struggle. But it is certainly achievable with dedication and practice. You've heard some practical, everyday advice from two people who have been there, Dawn and myself, but here's some additional suggestions that I believe will help you help you in that um, in that journey to maybe not be so much of a, of a perfectionist and allow oneself to be human. The first step, we mentioned it earlier, you have to acknowledge that you've got these tendencies. You've got to acknowledge the problem first. Pay attention to your thoughts and behaviors, such as maybe you're setting excessively high standards for yourself, Maybe you've got a crippling fear of failure, or you feel just terribly anxious when things aren't perfect. And then question the beliefs underlying your perfectionism. Ask yourself if the standards that you set for yourself are truly realistic, and if striving for perfection is necessary or even beneficial in every situation. You may find in a lot of cases it's not. And instead of aiming for perfection... Try setting goals that are more achievable and realistic for you. Break the tasks down to smaller, manageable steps and learn to celebrate your progress rather than just focusing solely on the end result. Treat yourself with kindness and understanding. 
especially when you make mistakes or when you fall short of your own expectations, remember, no one is perfect. And it is all right if you are imperfect. As a man of faith, it helps me to remind myself that God has already forgiven me. It's up to me to forgive myself. And I've found that looking into my own eyes in the mirror daily and repeatedly saying to myself, I forgive you, helps me far more than one might expect from such a simple daily exercise. Instead of viewing failure as a reflection of your worth or your competence, see it as a chance to learn and to grow. Embrace your mistakes as a valuable experience that contributes to your personal and professional development. You know, as VTubers and streamers, Dawn and I know just as well as anyone about something called scuff. That's the mistakes and technical problems we encounter on a live stream. They're an inevitability. We just had one uh, before we started recording. I had the music turned up a bit too loud. I had to turn it down and, uh, and repeat some of the things I said because nobody could hear me. So there's no use getting upset or even giving it much thought. Often it helps if we just laugh, make a joke out of it. Nobody died. The world didn't come to an end. No one's really going to hold it against us. So we may as well just laugh it off and press onward. Another thing, make self-care a priority in your life by engaging in activities that promote relaxation, stress reduction, and overall well-being. Taking breaks, getting some exercise, spend some time with loved ones and friends, pursuing hobbies, all of these can help alleviate perfectionistic tendencies. Who knows, maybe VTubing, streaming, podcasting, or some form of content creation or artistic craft is just what you need. Take this as your permission slip to experiment and find out what works or doesn't work for you, with no judgments, no criticisms, and no fault-finding from anyone. It may seem a bit cliched at first, but mindfulness techniques such as meditation, deep breathing exercises, they can really help you stay present in the moment and cultivate an acceptance of yourself and your circumstances. Mindfulness can also help keep you calm and reduce anxiety and even help you to stop yourself before you go down these perfectionistic thinking spiraling patterns. And finally, as we mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out to friends, to family, even a therapist, for support and guidance in overcoming perfectionism. No one is an island. You never have to feel alone. You deserve a safe space with people you trust, free from judgment and criticism, and full of love and acceptance. Talking to others about your struggles can really provide perspective and encouragement. Remember, Overcoming perfectionism is a gradual process, and it's okay to have setbacks along the way. Just be patient, compassionate with yourself, as you work towards letting go of unrealistic standards and embracing your imperfect, authentic, and beautifully human self. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Lord Rexworth Podcast. I hope these discussions have ignited your curiosity, sparked inspiration, and provided a moment of relaxation. To stay connected with the podcast and access additional content, be sure to visit my website at lordrexworth.com and follow me across all platforms there. That's lordrexworth.com. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Your support fuels our journey to continue bringing you engaging conversations and soothing ASMR experiences. As we conclude today's episode, remember, your mind and spirit are powerful forces, and we encourage you to embrace a positive, the positive energy that you've gained here. Until next time, take a moment for yourself, stay inspired, and continue exploring the boundless possibilities that life has to offer. Visit lordrexworth.com and be a part of our growing community. Thank you for being with us on the Lord Rexworth Podcast. Mm -hmm.